Hi everyone and welcome to Tuesday's Tips at 2 with Kimber Bell. My name is Laurie and today we are going to share some tips both sewing and embroidery for our brand new quilt Red, White and Bloom. Love this quilt. Um, I've been working on both the sewing and embroidery versions and I love them both. And one of the things that we're going to focus on today is going to be this beautiful truck. It's called the Parade Truck. It has got actually just so many cool aspects about it. And if you haven't picked up an embellishment kit, you will want that, especially just for this block. There's five things just from the embellishment kit for the sewing version and six for the embroidery version. So you guys, it's such a good deal to be able to get everything you need in the size that you need it. It really is a really good deal. All right, so today we've got a little surprise for you and I'm gonna let Maddie announce that fun surprise. So Maddie is the person that behind the scenes, right? She helps us answer all these questions. So go ahead, Maddie. Yeah, so at the end of this video, we're gonna be showing you what we're giving away. But I wanted to tell you guys all how you can be entered. So first thing you're gonna do is you're going to like this video. And the okay. second thing you're gonna do is tag a friend in the comments and that will enter you to win. Okay. And then at the end of this, Laurie will share with you what we're going to give away. It's pretty exciting. Sweet. It's so exciting. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so like the video, mm -hmm. comment. Yep. No. Tag in, a friend. In tag the a friend yep. in the comments. Great. Okay. And you'll be set. All right, so that's all you have to do. Can you do this more than once? You can do it more than once. So the more friends you tag, and okay. you want to do more than one comment. So okay. don't tag a bunch of friends in one comment, a bunch of different comments. And that'll gotcha. just give you more entries. So a comment per friend. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. More comments you make, more entries you Super get. Exciting. Okay. Exciting. And you'll get to see at the end of the episode today yep. what, what you're going to win. All right. So to get started today, um, we're going to start out with some sewing tips first and move into the embroidery tips. And it's all with the same block. So we're going to go ahead and move down to uh, the workspace here. It makes it a lot easier for you to see or view what we're going to be doing. All right, to start with, this is something that I love. I'm going to use this a lot during today's Tuesday Tips. We are going to use this not only with the sewing version, but with the embroidery version as well, especially with the pennant, the little pennant that was on the truck. So if you don't have any of this, this is great because it not only is for applique, the, fuse, the fusible part, excuse me, but there's a sticky part, which really makes it beneficial, and I'll show you how and why. All right, so to start out with, um, I'm just going to show you a couple of tricks, and it's using this very stuff right here, the fusible peel and stick. So I've traced my truck from my sewing version, from the um, directions that are in the back. Now, what it does is it tells you to cut it out into this shape. And can you see that shape right there? It's white on white. I know it's a little bit tricky, but you can see that it's a truck with the bed missing right here. Now the reason the bed is missing because that is a pocket that you're gonna use to tuck some things in behind. That's where your buttons pop out of. So it's very important that you cut this part out. Now it's very tricky, I thought, to trim this and keep it nice and even. So I found a little bit of a trick and it is this. So when I'm cutting my uh, item out and I will show you right here if you leave this bigger piece right here and you cut around here just like so because you've got to have this part cut out. Why? Because if you have fusible paper uh, of any kind really, it's going to stick to the fabric when you um, go to iron this onto your big piece and it's going to fill that in. We don't want that filled in. Okay, so do you see that? Now what I did is I left this, and I've done the same thing here, and I've already ironed this on to my, ooh, isn't that pretty, my red leather, which comes in the embroidery kit, or the embellishment kit, excuse me. And then what I'm going to do is I've marked right here to make sure that I still cut this out. So when I go to trim this around the outside, I'm going to cut this piece out. But you don't want to cut out the truck, the truck bed. So I'm gonna use my Kimberbell ruler here. It works perfect for this job. And you just go straight across from the 
tailgate to the back of the truck. That way you know that that's the part that you do not cut. So I write do not cut so I don't accidentally cut there. Okay, so I'm going to cut all the way around the outside of this truck and I do want to cut this out because I've marked that to cut out. Okay, that way if I cut it like that, I'm going to quickly show you and I love these Kimberbell scissors because they cut this leather very nice and clean without any uh, fraying. Can you see that? Nice clean cuts. I love these scissors so much. All right, so you're going to cut like this and you're going to finish cutting out around your truck. And you are also going to cut this part out so that when you iron this down, okay, I'm just going to quickly, it won't take me just a few seconds here um, to cut this out. It's really quick and it will make much more sense if I do uh, cut it out for you. All right, there we go. So as you can see, right there, now I've got it all cut out. I'm going to kind of clean that off for us. So now it's all cut out. Now what I love is this paper backing you can peel right off. And it leaves, let me see if I can do it this way, it leaves the um, sticky part. Okay. So as I peel this off, you can still see that all of this is sticky, but not here. That way it doesn't stick down and I have a pocket. Now the next tip I want to show you is, this is what I like to do. I don't want to stick that to my book. Um, I transfer the design, and you can transfer the design if you want to a piece of paper. That's great. That's what we recommend. But I wanted you to see that I mark the center of my design in the book. The reason I mark the center of my design, there is a reason for that. So when you go to place it on this um, background fabric, you're wondering, ooh, is this center? I don't know, I can't tell. Is the truck crooked or straight? So I simply fold my background fabric in half one way. I fold it in half another way. And then I line it up right in those this um, squaring up, if you will, where I marked where the center of the design is, and I hold it there, and I unfold it, and I unfold it, and I know that that is the very center. Now, what I like to do is take this either, I, I have a tracing um, board, and so I'm going to get my tracing board here, and I'm going to show you how I would use that. Now, um, I haven't traced this onto a sheet of paper, it's in the book still, but this tracing board right here, I'm going to show you what you can do with this. So what I do is I place that design and you can see the truck. You can actually see some of the stuff on the back side. That's why I would recommend tracing it first. Okay. And then you can actually, oops, you can actually place this and when you fold it open and you've got it lined up right in the middle. Okay. So it's lined up with my, you can see this is now centered on my design and you can still see the truck design through that and now I know exactly where I want to place my truck and look how easy that is. All I do is line it right up, place it and you can place all your other items right here when you have your truck right here and I know the truck is going to be on here, square and it's going to be right in the middle and that is just, I love that uh, tip. So I hope that that is a helpful tip for you and Thank you so much for my assistant here grabbing my light board. Thank you so much. All right. So the next and last tip for just the sewing, and stay tuned if you are an embroiderer. You're going to love the next few tips, I hope. All right. One thing I wanted to clarify, as you can see here, I used my light board. I've placed everything on here. Now, you can... Actually, anything that you don't want to actually hand sew, you're welcome to, but if you don't want to hand sew it, you can actually trace it off of that same design we just looked at, and you can actually place it on as well. So I've got everything placed on here ready to stitch, okay? As you can see, I did stitch one piece here, but that one of the sets of instructions, or the set of instructions, it says to stitch around the window. All I have placed at this point is my fabric, okay? So I've 
done a buttonhole stitch around the fabric only, okay? Once I have my whole truck finished, and let's pretend I've stitched now around everything else, then you take your piece of vinyl. Now the vinyl has not been cut. As you can see, I want it left in this square shape that it calls for in the directions. I have not cut it to the shape of the window yet, okay? You're gonna place that over the top of the window and use a tef Teflon foot, presser foot, or you can place tape underneath your foot if it's metal, and then you just do a straight stitch just around the outside of this window. And I would recommend a triple stitch. So you can do a triple stitch right around the outside of the window, then you'll get your scissors and you'll trim the excess vinyl away. That's the way you're gonna want to do the sewing version for the window. All right, here's some tips on the embroidery version. Okay, so the embroidery version, it has a placement line. When you get here, you can see I've stitched it in red, so you can see it. Then you place your vinyl down on that line, okay? It may be confusing because later it says to unpick and you're thinking, what am I unpicking? It's this little line right here that you're gonna be unpicking. Now, if you prefer to not have to unpick it later um, and you've placed your uh, leather down, you can trim around the leather, not worry about unpicking that yet. And when you get to this stage right here, after you've done this, you will unpick. But as you can see, I still have stitching, but you can't see it there very well, can you? I chose stitching that matches my background so that I didn't have to unpick it later. So you can do either way. You can either unpick it later if you do a contrasting color or match the color and you don't have to unpick anything later. All right, and the last thing I wanted to show you was a tip and a trick with this. This is called permanent topping. This is something that's really a great thing to have that's in your embellishment kit. This is, this is what I love. You can see that you can see some of the red through the stitching here, right? To keep it as white as possible for your white window, that's what this is. It's a protective um, layer underneath your um, stitching and it prevents shadowing, okay? So if you prevent the shadowing, I didn't finish stitching it because I wanted you to see what it would look like part way done. When it's done at this point, when it's all finished, you just simply tear this away. It's very easy to tear. So you just tear this away and then you would do the same thing as we did with the sewing version. You add the vinyl very last. So once this is torn away, you'll add the vinyl and it'll tack it down and you trim it the same way. All right, so those are both tips for your um, truck. Okay, I wanted to show you a tip and a trick with these pennant, the little pennant that goes in the back of the truck. Such a cute, cute thing. However, um, it can be a little bit tricky because they're tiny, tiny pieces. So in the instructions, it does have you take a template, a paper template, and you would probably pin it or something to your fabric um, so that you can trim it out, right? And that is going to be, let's see here. You see how that, uh, once you trim out your template, you still have to somehow hold it to your fabric, trace around it, then cut your fabric, and then you've got to iron your fabric over, okay? And then you glue it together once you put it on your twine. Those are the directions in the book, which work wonderfully. However, I found a little bit of a shortcut that I like, and as you can see, I've used it on this little guy right here, okay? So what it is, is this right here, uh, I used the same paper fusible applique, I'm gonna gather these cute little guys and bring them over here, that I used to start uh, do the sewing version. It's the same one I showed you at the very beginning. So basically, I traced it on, and you, you cut it out, and then it, it stays right there. You don't have to worry about it leaving. And once I've got it cut out, like that, okay, I take my Kimberbell tweezers. I love all these tools. They're such a great, great help. I'm gonna line my tweezer with the, the middle marking on the bottom, and you simply fold it over. Now, how easy was that? And now it's ready 
to take off the sticky part. Okay, see how it stays nice and, and um, folded, if you will? So I've got one of these that I've got the sticky almost off. And in order to work with this, I like to tape this down. So I've made a bow. I've added one so far. I'm going to tape it down. I'm going to show you how I add more. Because you want them to all lay flat as they come along. So I'm just going to tuck this underneath where I'd like it. And I'm simply, it's already been um, pre-formed with that, uh, um, the fold. And look at that. One. Done. No glue needed. I love that. You do not need any glue for this, um, doing it this way. And you already have this in your uh, sewing room, I hope. And there's another one. I've already peeled it off. You just simply fold it back over where you've already started the fold. And voila, number two, done. Now, what I love about this is it's sticky. You can pull it apart, put it together, pull it apart, slide it up and down if you need to until it's permanently ready. So look how cool that is. And if you have any that stick out, you simply trim them and look, they stick, they're laying flat, and they're not going anywhere. I love this. So that's a great method right there for putting your pennants on your twine. Um, all right, are you guys ready? We are gonna show you what you can win, all right? So remember, you need to like it and comment or tag a friend in your comment section. Just do one friend per section, okay? So per comment, I mean. So if you wanted to tag um, Jane, let's say your friend is Jane, tag Jane, Jane only, okay? And like it. Then you go to the next one and you're gonna tag, let's say Maddie, tag Maddie as the next one. And you just tag one person per comment, all right? This is what you're gonna win. You guys ready for this? Look at these. We're gonna have two winners. So they're red, white, and bloom, are a fill thread that matches and is coordinated for this particular quilt. Love this. And if you're uh, loving these, then you can always find out where you can get more. Love these. Uh, R feels a great brand, first of all, and I love that it matches. You don't have to go out and find any of the matching threads. We, these are available as well. Check your local quilt shop. Thank you so much for joining us today, and we hope to see you next week. Bye-bye.